So let me just take you back in time for a minute because I was in Shanghai um, in China a number of years ago. I was writing the book Collusion and I met there with um, the senior officials who were effectively putting together the new development bank or the, or the BRICS bank. And the, the idea of that was for the BRICS nations to effectively trade with each other, potentially have currencies accepted by each other. And in the future, um, have something that backs them, right? So the idea of a gold-backed or something-backed currency was was brought up um, a number of years ago when the BRICS Bank was created. And, and since then, there have been these annual meetings of, of the BRICS countries as well as other countries who are interested in, um, in diluting the power of the U.S. dollar. As we draw closer to the BRICS August meeting, many more financial experts and geopolitical analysts are giving their thoughts on the ongoing geopolitical shift and how much it threatens the present financial system, especially in the United States. During a recent interview with Stansberry Research, geopolitical finance expert, speaker, and best-selling finance author Nomi Prims deeply analyzes the BRICS alliance's goal of dethroning the greenback as the world's reserve currency by introducing a gold-backed currency. She discusses what this would mean for the United States economy, the dollar, and gold, which the BRICS alliance and their allies have been accumulating rapidly for several months now. Though Nomi agrees that ending the dollar's dominance will be a gradual process, she is convinced that a currency backed by a strong hard asset and several countries united by one big goal will rapidly chip at the dollar's dominance and significantly impact the U.S. economy over the coming years. That's why the financial analyst believes buying gold and silver now to prepare for that eventuality is one of the best plays for investors at the moment. There has been much controversy about the August BRICS meeting and how exactly the alliance plans to achieve its goal of ending the dollar's dominance and replacing the current unipolar system with a multipolar world with multiple superpowers from different regions. But the alliance and their allies have made it very clear that they have a goal and they are setting a lot of things in motion to achieve it. Earlier this month, the official Twitter account of the Russian embassy in Kenya confirmed via a tweet that the alliance will be introducing a common gold-backed currency in August. Here is the tweet. The BRICS countries are planning to introduce a new trading currency, which will be backed by gold. More and more countries recently expressed the desire to join BRICS. According to Prims, this is an iconic and important moment for gold not just because of the BRICS upcoming meeting, but also because of an important development happening right on U.S. soil. As we bring you clips from the interview, please take a little time to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to drop your comments and observations in the comments section below. Thanks and enjoy the video. And since then, there have been these annual meetings of, of the BRICS countries as well as other countries who are interested in um, in diluting the power of the U.S. dollar um, from a trade perspective and from just a, a currency and a payments perspective globally, right? Um, gold allows um, them to be more on a level playing field, meaning if you have a certain amount of gold that ultimately backs some kind of a BRICS or just other world alternative world currency, um, that's actually a way to keep the sort of stronger BRICS countries and the other countries a bit more equal, right? Because there's a certain percentage of a currency that would be denominated in gold, and that's one of the reasons why we've not just seen banks like like China um, or India stockpile gold, we have seen you know Turkey and other smaller banks also also nations also stockpile gold for that eventuality. So can that happen? Um, I do think it can happen. How long are we from that, and how much will that impact the dollar? I think we are years, if not decades, from that really impacting the dollar. And, and the reason for that is that it's not it's not going to chip away at the dollar. It's not that more trade is not going to happen around the size of the dollar. It will, it is, right? The dollar has gone from about 63% of all global trade to about 56% of all global trade in the last 10 years or so, or since the financial crisis. So there's definitely um, a sort of lowering of the impact of the dollar in trade. That will continue, but it will continue slowly. It will not be replaced. Um, I don't actually think it's going to be replaced in our lifetimes, but that doesn't mean there isn't a trading pattern here that's emerging. It doesn't mean there aren't more conversations happening. And it does mean it's good for gold because, again, that will be the, the equalizer. And, and the other thing on gold real quick is if this is happening in the United States as well. Um, and this that's is right. potentially this is this is like the most super interesting fact that I have come across literally this year. I was I was so kind of excited about it because I love these game changers in the world of money. Um, especially with the world of money relative to, to real assets, um, you know, in particular gold. Um, and that's that in the Texas legislature, both in the Senate and in the House, and often bills get 
introduced in, in, in both the House and the Senate, whether that is on a federal level or on a state level, that just means there's agreement. And if you want to pass something as a law, you need both houses anyway to adopt some form of that law. So this happened um, in the last couple of months in Texas, is that on the Texas Senate side and the, and the House side, um, there were there were bills that were created to effectively create a gold backed digital currency in Texas. Now, this does not mean that can be a currency if it passes that could be used throughout the United States on a federal level. But it is the first country and the first step to saying, look, we we as a state want to basically fight the overall power of the Fed. So we as a state, if this passes, will effectively accept a reserve amount of gold in, in our reserves at the comptroller, at the sort of treasury of Texas, that will be matched one for one, dollar for dollar, with any user of that digital currency backed by gold. So in other words, if I have a digital gold-backed currency, they have to set aside that amount of gold at the Texas treasury in order for me to know that my currency is secure. And that currency will be used, if it passes, for any payments to the state within the state um, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a state legislative level. So I can pay my taxes with a digital gold back currency. I can pay debts to the state. And I can yeah, pay that's... businesses who agree to be part of that interacting in the state. Now, this is in the, you know, it's early stages, but this is this is a huge game changer. And just even the yeah. fact that we are talking about it. But <clears throat> that's a game changer, especially when yeah. it comes to taxes for residents of, of Texas. Yes, and, and for gold prices um, in, in general, because there, there's, there's a number of, of states, Utah is one, um, I believe Arizona is one, that have the ability, um, because of how they're dealing with coinage, um, which is, again, a whole other topic relative to the Constitution, but they have the ability to potentially introduce something like this as well. A third of the House in Texas did approve um, the motion of this bill to move forward for a vote. So that's pretty big, yes. considering it's the first yeah. one that was brought up, right? So it might not happen this year. But if 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 the legislators involved continue to sound um, sort of the, you know, sort of the bell there, um, we, we can see more movement in that space. Gold, silver and other precious metals serve as insurance against the current U.S. dominated global financial system. The world's central banks realized this year ago during the global financial crisis. Prior to the crisis, they stopped buying gold and were loading up on U.S. treasuries after the establishment of the petrodollar system. But the global crisis and the Federal Reserve's response to it made them realize how unsustainable the fiat monetary system is. The response to the pandemic and heavy sanctions against Russia are more recent and motivating factors for the world's apex banks, which are now purchasing the precious metal at record highs in 2023, possibly about to surpass last year's equally record high purchases. This same realization of the precarious state of the U.S. economy is what Nomi Prims wants for retail investors in and out of the United States. The only other option is to rely on the system, which is certainly not a wise move, especially when one considers the previous record of our policymakers. As an example, Prims uses the example of the U.S. Central Bank and its relentless stance in remaining hawkish until something breaks. Here are some more clips from the interview. So here's what I think's going on, speaking of, of Powell um, and Egos. So obviously we've just seen some good inflation numbers and that we're basically up 3% over last year, down from 4% over last year in the prior set of numbers. Um, and, and as you mentioned, the, the incremental monthly numbers are, are lower than expected to just up 0.2% instead of 0.3%. All that is indicative of inflation coming down. Now, the fact that we are even still talking about the Fed you know, sneaking in another 25 basis points, maybe two other 25 basis points movements upward um, is, is really kind of irrelevant at this point in the scheme of markets, because whatever happens, inflation is going to do what inflation is going to do. An extra 25 basis points here or there is literally not going to change anything. For example, if we have a ratchet up and it's already and it has been still bad in Ukraine uh, relative to Russia and and more you know sort of heat in Europe, heat in the United States. We're going to see energy prices pop up. That's just a reality. At that point, inflation is going to pop up again, and there's nothing the Fed can do about that. So so basically, what I think is this is if we do have another 25 basis point move at the July FOMC, that is that is a vanity move. That is an ego move. That's basically the Fed saying, hey, we're not at 2%, which is an arbitrary number anyway, yet. So we're just going to kind of tweak around the edges until we get there. But the reality is 
whatever the Fed does at this point, they have paused. They have said they're going to look at the data. We are at numbers from just a year past COVID and our employment numbers are where they were at before COVID even happened. So this whole hot labor thing is, is not even really um, that much of, a, of an issue right now. It's just something the Fed is still kind of focused on. But again, I think it's a vanity focus. And I think the best way to navigate that as, as an investor is to literally ignore what the Fed does if it raises rates by another 25 or, or 50 or two incremental uh, rate hikes within the next several months or not. Because, because the reality is it's not going to impact the quality of investments, the place in which we're investing or the way in which those investments are going to perform once the Fed stops talking about tweaking around the edges with respect to inflation. So I think we're at a moment here where we got to understand that the Fed did pause. The Fed did say, even though it wasn't in 100 percent agreement amongst itself, uh, you know, that, that we are actually looking at not inflation where we want it to be, but inflation near where we want it to be. And there's still work to do. But they paused. And so any of this incremental noise, any incremental um, adjustments, which I'm going to call them adjustments, not inflation in fighting rate hikes that could occur in the next few months if they occur. I don't think investors should be paying attention to them. I think investors should take at this point more of that medium and longer term view and say, look, at the end of the day, they're not going to hike rates by 100 basis points. They're not going to dramatically change the cost of money at this point. And the next move, it will be in 2024, not before that, will be a revision downward in rates. And we have to just look ahead at this point. But the reality is, if we do have any kind of a prolonged economic slowdown, I'm not saying it's necessarily a recession or something worse than that. But if we do have um, a slowdown in growth, which we are already seeing, um, so whether that gets, uh, you know, from a numerical standpoint defined as a recession or not, the point is we are already seeing a slowdown in growth and that can only potentially continue. And here's why the debt overhang that all of us have as individuals, we, we as, as consumers, um, we might have stopped buying as much over last month, but we are buying more with debt and with more expensive debt and credit card usage than we have ever had in our history. And that's by the New York Fed's own reports and own numbers. Plus, obviously, as a country, you know, we've just pushed up the debt cap indefinitely for two years. Um, and who knows what happens beyond that? So, so we are basically already relative to inflation. Our growth has already Slow down. So I think the Fed is going to have to, as will other central banks, once they get the inflation bug out of their huds, um, will have to turn around and especially the United States, uh, reduce rates sometime next year. In other news, India and the United Arab Emirates, UAE, have signed a Memorandum of Understanding, MOU, to create a linked payments and messaging system between the Reserve Bank of India and the Central Bank of the United Arab Emirates. On Saturday, governors from both central banks signed and exchanged the MOUs in Abu Dhabi. The event was also witnessed by UAE President Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed and Prime Minister Narendra Modi. According to a statement from India's External Affairs Ministry, the agreement will establish a framework to promote the use of local currencies, rupee and dirham, for cross-border transactions between the two countries, negating the need to transact in U.S. dollars. All BRICS countries are now bypassing the dollar and making transactions using the Chinese Yuan, Indian Rupee, and other local currencies. Do you think the trend will continue? How soon and how deeply is it going to impact the U.S. dollar, which has for decades enjoyed the status of the global reserve and trade currency? Please drop your comments and observations in the comments section below. Also, ensure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos. Thanks for watching.